If you guys ever wanted to print a cool vintage shirt like this one, this shirt has tons of color and a lot of different elements. Design-wise, it's super creative, but when it comes to printing the actual shirt, which method do you use? Now, common options include heat transfer, sublimation, DTG, and screen printing. And we're also gonna jump into a design tutorial to show you which software to use to create a sick nostalgic tee like this one. <laughs> Guys, but before we jump into this design tutorial, I wanna quickly share the easiest printing method that anyone watching can do from home. Wow, still being efficient. And that would be with heat transfers. And to kick off our test, we're gonna be starting with Old Reliable. We're rocking here a Walla Press Pro. It's about a $1,300 heat press. You've seen it before, you know it, and we love it. We're ready to rock our, our press is hot and everything. First step, what we wanna do is we wanna prep our t-shirt. This is a 100% cotton t-shirt. We got it from Bella Canvas, and that's gonna be the best material to heat press on. Get all of our wrinkles out. Little relent roller, it gets all that extra stuff off. And like always, a little bit of a pre-press. Looks good. Slide out our platen. This is one thing I really like about this heat press. You don't burn yourself touching your hand up on there or nothing. Four finger rule. Although this is a little bit bigger of a transfer, so I'm gonna move it up. We're gonna do, we're gonna do three fingers to the Y. Center tag. 16 seconds, 300 degrees. And can't forget the heat press countdown song. Heat press countdown song. No, it don't take that long. Nah, 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 heat press countdown song. Yeah, 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 talk about three, two, one. Yeah, let's go. Here we go, and we just roll it out. Super color is hot and confident. Peel it hot and confident, no look. <laughs> Talk about a peel, look at that. Look at that, look at that. We got ourselves a genuine vintage hip hop tee. Fast and Furious theme, family hood. Not available nope. for sale, sorry. Hate to do it to y'all. Now Diego, come in here and get this. You may have noticed that some of our heat transfer has black missing from the actual transfer. We removed it in Photoshop to give our image a cleaner look. And what it does is it shows the black fabric as a part of the design and it lets our super color breathe a little bit. Guys, now the pros of using a heat transfer is that anyone can do this from home, and your cost per shirt stays relatively low. As the setup doesn't take up much space, you can literally throw this on top of a table and you're good to start printing shirts. Now some of the bottlenecks that you may encounter is the price of this heat press. Now $1,300 may be a lot for people to invest right out the gate, so Heat Transfer Warehouse does have options for $300, which we're gonna link in the description down below. Now, if you do decide to go with a heat press that has more features like this, there is monthly installments available, which will allow you to buy it for little upfront and then just make monthly payments. As you make money, you pay it off. Now, one of the things that you do need to know about heat transfers though, even though Supercolor does an amazing job in, in formatting designs for you and making it look really pretty, is the fact that you as a designer need to design to let the t-shirt breathe. Because if you don't let the t-shirt come out through the design, it's gonna feel like a plastic. So when it comes to using heat transfers, always design with heat transfers in mind. Now in this next part of the video, we're gonna be showing you guys how we actually designed this so you can get to know a little bit about the framework and how we did it. And then we're also gonna be breaking down sublimation as well as DTG. So by the end of this video, you can decide on which print method is gonna work best for your design. We're gonna start the design by choosing our main pictures off of Google Images. I know that's a no-no, but we're still gonna do it. And I'm just gonna save them. I might not use all of them, but I'm just looking for a general direction here. I live life one quarter mile at a time. I don't have friends. I got family. Family, family, family. Brazil. <laughs> so once we have our main images chosen, I'm gonna go ahead and make me a new project. And this one is 3508 by 4861 pixels, 300 resolution. Now it's time to cut the backgrounds out. So it's almost like those old school collages where you see people with scissors cutting out pictures from old magazines and just pasting them. It's like same technique here, but digital. So this technique is great for beginners because it's all fundamentals, y'all. All the tools and shortcuts are really surface level and the best part is we don't need to be perfect with our work. This style of design is supposed to look a little cheesy, a little corny, everything representative of 90s clothing. So gotta love it. And to cut Dom out of the background, I was able to get away with just literally using the magic eraser tool one click, he was separated from the background. And with this pictures of the two cars drag racing, I'm taking the normal eraser, I'm gonna drop down the hardness of my brush and just shape the layer around these cars, leaving a little bit of the background here. I like that train going through the back. 
When it comes to the other elements of the shirt, I'm gonna use Envato Elements for stock photos. The photos from Envato, they got much better resolution and you're actually allowed to use them and sell these kind of images when you use them in your designs. So I found this fire photo of some fire and I think it'll make an awesome background for our shirt. I'm gonna drop the opacity, I'm gonna shape it with this eraser tool here and I just don't want those hard square edges so we're gonna soften them up. And since this is a 90s hip hop inspired shirt, we gotta have some sick jewelry now. So we're putting Dom's necklace front and center, baby. While we're talking about bling, now would be a good time to add in some text and ice it out. Here, I'm just using the arc tool to warp the shape and placing these diamond textures behind each letter. Once the diamonds are set, I can just use this magic wand and it'll perfectly outline each letter. From there, I just select each diamond layer and press backspace. This deletes all the diamond texture that's not within the borders of the letter, giving you an iced out letter and you can you don't have to buy no plugins, it's all for free, y'all. Next, I'm gonna change the color of my text, add a bevel and emboss by right-clicking my family hood text layer. This gives it that heavy, like, diamond, white, gold, like, chain. Mm, look. I'll add in some more elements as I feel inspired, and each image is getting the colors like, crushed in my exposure menu. So you just go to the exposure menu, Play around with those sliders there and you'll make it a more flat, more vintage, harder look. And on top of that, I really want to add an Easter egg into this design, something personal for the gang. So I took a screenshot of John in his debut film, El Bazooka. I'm gonna add him to the background. He's the cartel gunman right here. From there, I'm gonna add our brand from the ground up, AKA FTGU. On the bottom of the shirt, put a couple lens flares into the mix. Now we're blinging, now we're shining. Diamonds and gold looking good, bling bling baby. From here, I'm just gonna add some color filters after that, crushing the design, putting the blue over them, putting the red, really making these things pop, giving it that grungy look that I was going for. And now I'm just gonna export as a PNG, save my files, and we're ready to print. So for the sublimation shirt, obviously we gotta use a white shirt because you can't sublimate on black shirts. And I'm not a fan of just that black box around the white shirt, gives it that swap meet like knockoff look, Whoa. that's not what we're doing here. So I have to break out the pen tool and start deleting some of this background. Once our image is formatted for this white background, we're good to print the image out on our good old Sawgrass SG-1000 sublimation printer. This thing is friggin' awesome. For the sublimation test, we're rocking our Sawgrass SG-1000 sublimation printer and oh reliable, the Walla Press Pro. And I have literally zero experience when it comes to sublimation printing, and I was actually able to get this printer running in the matter of 90 minutes. Prints 11 inch by 17 and a half inch paper, and it goes on more than just clothes. We can make custom water bottles, signs, custom puzzles, we can do metal art, and even, even more stuff than I could think of right now, so stay tuned, we're gonna make more sublimation videos. And the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna print out my design. And so for this design, the biggest we can make it on this printer was 10 and a half inches wide by 13.9 inches tall, which should be a pretty sizable print. Pretty, pretty big, so now all we do is print and then we're about to have it pop out here. My focus still on the shot. How do I look? Am I cute? And we got the blue light on. This is data in, so we know it received our print. And don't take that. It's almost done. Cool. Well, that's a good print, too. Now, what the sublimation printer does is it's going to print it automatically in reverse because this is the side we put down on our shirt. So when we peel it off, It'll be, the, it'll be the right side. So the next thing to do is to press it. We just gotta get busy with it. We got our polyester sh uh, blank shirt right here. This is not cotton, it's polyester. So that's, that's the trick to sublimation shirts. And we're gonna do, as always, a little bit of pre-press. Talk about pressure. A little bit of a pre-press. A little bit of a pre-press. <laughs> you see all the steam escaping. That's the moisture in the shirt gone. So moisture is the enemy of the sublimation. So that's why we did that, and it gives us a nice little smooth surface. Three fingers down from the neckline. That's where the top of my design is gonna start. Equal distance from the edges. Okay, now it's time to run the press. What we have here is a copper or Teflon shield. It's a nice optional little thing you get with heat pressing. And for the sublimation press, we're at 400 degrees, and we're gonna do that for 40 seconds. Here we go. We're counting down from 40. Uh, not 16 this time, so it's gonna be a little bit longer of a heat press countdown song. Heat press countdown song. No, but don't take that long. Nah, nah, nah. Heat press countdown song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about three, two, one. Yeah, let's go. go. And I'm not gonna peel right away. 
Sublimation is gases. They're going crazy. Right now they're all expanding and settling in there while it's still hot. So I'm gonna give it all a chance to settle into the shirt. And we're just letting, letting those gases settle. Okay, moment of truth. We're gonna lift up our transfer paper. Oh, okay. This is pretty sweet. A sublimated family hood Dom Toretto. This print is really embedded into the fabric. You can stretch it, and it's it's legit in there. So you know this isn't this isn't like a peeling kind of situation. Nothing's gonna peel on us. Moisture wicking. I'm so happy I got a good press, bro. Now to me, the cool part about having a sublimation printer like this one is that you don't have to wait on your heat transfers to come in the mail. Because as soon as you're done designing, you can simply print it out and the sublimation transfer comes into a sheet like this. And once you get this sheet, you're essentially just ready to press it with the heat press. Now, one of the things that you are limited to is using polyester fabrics. And another con is the fact that you do have to get a heat press as well as this printer in order for this to work. So that does have an upfront investment, but again, there is financing options available. And as with any equipment, there's a learning curve as well as limitations to using it. So every, every piece of equipment has some limitations, guys. So make sure you look at what limitations this has before you purchase it. But for beginners, this is super easy for anybody to use and start getting into the sublimation printing game. This is the method that I think will be the cleanest way to print our multicolor design. What you're seeing here is a direct-to-garment printer, and it's a very sophisticated printer, like an inkjet on steroids. Instead of printing onto paper, it prints onto the actual shirt. These printers carry a super hefty price tag, but believe it or not, it's one of the most cost-effective ways to actually get a full color design. You could place an order through a company like this one, and they just print it. There's no setup fees or anything like that. It's a lighter layer of ink, and it keeps us from having that super heavy plastisol feel. And this method allows for maximum creativity at minimum cost. Unlike screen printing, which has setup fees, art separation fees, and minimum order quantities, DTG allows you to print one-off shirts with the push of a button. Screen printing this design would be a nightmare, but achievable if our order volume was there. Unfortunately, our order volume is zero because we're not legally allowed to sell these shirts. They got Dom Toretto on them, so we just thought it'd be a cool shirt for the office and we thought you guys would like it. And it's coming out already. This shirt is sick. Okay, so our nice shirt just got printed and we gotta cure it. So this is the secret technique they taught me. Right off, don't let it touch. And on the rack it goes. Got the Family Hood DTG shirt right there. This thing is sick. Josh, thank you so much. Thank what, you for coming, guys. Man, what would our audience need to start direct-to-garment printing with Golden Manufacturing? All you need, basically, is the design. If you are creative, if you are an artist, and have design, so uh, the design, as long as it's in a PNG format, you're good to go. Cool, cool things about it, it's uh, um, no minimums, uh, fast turnaround, and uh, great quality. It literally took two minutes for us to make this thing, so we're gonna print another one. Yep. How do you feel? Feel good you want about one it. too? <laughs> yeah. I guess you want. <laughs> All right, you guys, now we go into the comparison of the three printing methods. Now, in my personal opinion, I don't think sublimation works the best for t-shirt prints. I think it's a really good option for like socks and cups and accessories. Like if you want to hit on a bag, anything polyester related, sublimation is really good. It is also really good for sportswear products. But since this wasn't a sportswear design, I would definitely rule sublimation out when it comes to doing anything streetwear. But if you're doing something sportswear, it's a great option. The other thing that you need to know about sublimation is the colors. Now colors a lot of time will depend on the temperature of the heat as well as the press. So how hard is the press? Did you release it too soon? Did you release it too late? Because the gases are getting infused into the actual material, you're gonna run into the situation where if you don't have the perfect press and heat, the design might come out a little wonky and you'll just have to make adjustments according to each design. Now, the next option that we discussed in this video was heat transfers. And honestly, in my opinion, heat transfers are a great low cost barrier for you to do this from home. Now, the only thing that you need to know is that you need to format your artwork for heat transfers. And what this means is you really have to try to break the elements of the design apart. Now, Cody did an amazing job with the actual graphic design. So in order to maintain the integrity when you're ordering transfers from, from Supercolor, if you send them a design, they may tweak the artwork 
so it comes out looking really good. But because they tweaked it for you to, to make it look the best, you might compromise on the actual feel of the garment. So in my opinion, it looks really good and heat transfers are a great way to sell your product at a low cost. But if I'm wearing this, it would feel very heavy and I would be sweating a lot because I actually sweat a lot. So in my opinion, heat transfers on this design would be a little rough unless you were to break out the art a lot better and just like kind of keep in mind to design for heat transfers, let the garment breathe. Which brings us to our last product and that's DTG. Now DTG, in my opinion, is the best method for these type of streetwear designs. And the reason for it is that it prints the ink right onto the shirt. So because it prints the ink right onto the shirt, you're actually getting a very like light screen print feel. So this almost feels like a screen print without needing to have multiple screens for multiple colors. So because DTG allows you to just print full color on one garment at a time, yes, the cost is a little higher, but the end product is just as good or better than screen printing. Because of the fact that it just feels soft, it really embeds into the fabric, similar to how sublimation does. Kind of a mix between how it embeds in sublimation and how heat transfers feel. It feels more like a screen print with a little bit of sublimation in there. And if you guys wanna dive into the process to designing a streetwear collection, check out this video here that we made with the man Mike Leisure, where he breaks down how you should be looking at design to create the best product. And if you're not already subscribed, subscribe right here. We'll see you guys on the next one.